Okay, so, oh, here we go. We got Robin. Hey, Robin, welcome back. Um, oh, okay. Have, it's your turn now. Yeah, Thanks. no, no, no. I, I, I started talking and I thought I unmuted myself, but I guess not. It's a conspiracy. Conspiracy. I truly believe it because they've been doing some this to me for a long time. Just kidding. Um, but I'm sorry. I, I thought I unmuted, but hello. Thank you again. Sorry. We were posed several questions, but I will focus on just this. How do we abolish systems and practices that perpetuate anti-Blackness and anti-Black racism? Another way of framing this question is this. How do we, as Filipinx, Filipino, Filipina people work to dismantle white supremacy? Today, I'd like to offer a perspective on the limits of social media as a mode of abolition, invite us all to consider additional and other forms of engagement. I want to make two points, and the first is this. In as much as social media has clearly played a tremendous role in laying bare a reality that Black communities have always known, that Black lives have not mattered, that Black people are consigned to death even before they are born in this country, social media cannot fully reveal the insidiousness of white supremacy. Though it is now more common to even talk about white supremacy as systemic racism, a term activists and organizers doing racial justice work have long been using, but was ignored or dismissed before, what does it really mean? When we say white supremacy is systemic, it means that it has been deeply ingrained over a long swath of time and that it is highly organized around a system of laws, policies, and institutions, a system of settler colonial, global racial and gendered capitalism, which builds on and is built by white supremacy. It is easy to recognize white supremacy that comes in the form of a knee on the neck, as in the court case of George Floyd, or in the form of the whites only drinking fountains of years past. But what cannot be visibilized is the violence of white supremacy when it conceals itself. For example, in laws that deregulate water quality, such that the water that comes out of the taps in black people's homes is poison. That everyone around the world has to buy clean water. That there are companies that profit from something that is so essential to our bodily function that clean water is not a human right. That we don't question that very system. That is white supremacy and global racial capitalism at its finest. White supremacy conceals itself and co-ops us in the process through ide ideologies like the model minority myth, an ideology applied to us and other Asians. Our so-called success is actually a product of very intentional social engineering that created an immigration system that favored those who were highly educated in their homelands. By calling these already privileged arrivance model minorities, white supremacy produces a fantastic cover-up and many of us get caught up in believing the lie. These dynamics of settler colonial, global racial and gendered capitalism of white supremacy are dynamics that cannot be fully captured and visibilized on social media. And this leads me to my second major point about social media's limits, to dismantle a highly organized system that has developed and evolved and become more sophisticated, sophisticated over time will require much more of us than a post, a like, or a share. Though I don't doubt, and I've experienced this too, especially in the time of COVID, that a like or a share makes us feel connected to others of similar mind frames. I don't doubt that the likes and shares we accumulate on our posts can feel affirming but I worry that it replaces the more challenging investment in relationship building or of working in an organized, collective, and sustained manner with others toward abolition. We need to ask ourselves if eviscerating someone on Twitter 
might actually comply with the logics of settler colonial global racial and gendered capitalism? How are Twitter and social media platforms ultimately about profits? Though the profits to us as users may not be measured in dollars and cents, though it's definitely about that for their owners, though the profits are in social capital, white supremacist logics prevail when we operate from a logic of profit. They prevail when we, de when we dehumanize people and put them in virtual death by cancellation. Social media does have a role to play and a positive one at that in the work of abolishing white supremacy. But what became truly powerful and decisive more re recently is when people closed their laptops, put their phones down and put their bodies on the line together with thousands of others for genuine transformation. These mass mobilizations made possible, not simply through social media, but through the political education sessions, strategy meetings, and the other painstaking, protracted, other not so visually interesting social media postable work coordinated and sustained by movements over many decades and generations. It is that work that has mainstreamed the idea of defunding the police, a once seemingly impossible demand. There is a greater power that comes with embodied forms of resistance and collective movement building that is true now as it was and has been true for our freedom fighting ancestors. My invitation and entreaty to all of us is this. If we are to abolish systems and practices of anti-blackness as Philippinex people, we have to reject the values and modalities of settler colonial, global, racial, and gendered capitalism. It means we have to put in the work we have to lead with decency, compassion, patience, and love. We have to relationship build and be fully present. We have to commit. We have to organize. We have to build. Black feminist Audre Lorde's words are especially relevant here. For the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may allow us temporarily to beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change. I can offer some concrete ideas about how to do, how to do this abolitional work um, in the question and answer later, but I'll end here. Black liberation is liberation for all y'all. Thank you.